In this video, I will derive the entropy given the partition function. First, the definition of the partition function Q is the sum of e to the power of negative beta epsilon i. Beta is 1 over kBt. Epsilon i is the energy of the ith energy level, and i is from 1 to n. n can be infinity. So really, Q is simply the sum of all those exponential functions. And then the Boltzmann distribution tells us the probability of a particle occupying the ith energy level, p sub i, is equal to e to the power of negative beta epsilon i divided by the partition function q. And it's easy to prove that the sum of all those p sub i is equal to 1. So basically, the sum of p sub i is the sum of this divided by, again, the sum of this. The Boltzmann entropy formula is very simple. The entropy of a system equals the Boltzmann constant k sub b times the natural logarithm of w. w is the total number of microstates the system may have access to. And then for a system that contains n distinguishable particles, the total number of microstates is given by this equation. Uh, this is a simple combination problem. If we have uh, m particles and we put a1 particles in the first box, a2 particles in the second box, and so on, this is the number of combinations uh, of the arrangements. And the number of microstates course, is equal to this uh, m factorial divided by the product of a1 factorial, a2 factorial, and so on. Now we can use this w to compute entropy. Entropy equals the Boltzmann constant times the logarithm of w. We plug in the expression of w. We get uh, kb times the natural logarithm Oh, kb times the natural logarithm of m factorial minus uh, over here this becomes the sum of the natural logarithm of ai factorial and then we use uh, sterling's approximation which states that the natural logarithm of x factorial equals x times ln x minus x so we use sterling's approximation here to get this we use the same approximation to uh, uh, simplify this part. And then uh, this part, the sum of a sub i is the total number of particles, which is n. So you have negative n minus negative n. So these two actually cancel. And then we have only two terms left. And then this n can be expressed as the sum of a sub i, as I mentioned the sum of a sub i is n. So we get this uh, expression here. And uh, now we can combine these two terms because these two are both the sum of a uh, 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 item uh, summing over from i equals 1 to n. Again, n can be even infinity. So we put these two together. We're going to have this uh, ln n minus ln a sub i which becomes the natural logarithm of n divided by a sub i. And then we swap this two by uh, including a negative sign in front, and then we swap this two. And we know a sub i is equal to n times the probability of a particle occupying the i's energy level. So a sub i equals n times p sub i. So I'm replacing a sub i with n times p sub i. Again, p sub i is the probability of a particle occupying the ith energy level. And then this part can be simplified to simply just pi. Uh, and uh, we can take this n, the total number of particles, out of the sum because it's a constant. So this is the expression of entropy given the probability of a particle occupying the ith energy level. And this expression is very much similar to the entropy equation in information theory. All right, the probability of a particle occupying the ith energy level equals 
e to the power of negative beta epsilon i divided by q, the partition function. And then I'm going to plug in this expression of the probability into the expression of entropy. So we do that here. pi is equal to e to the power of negative beta epsilon i over q. So I'm plugging both. And this logarithm becomes a uh, subtraction. So it's going to be the logarithm of e to the power of negative beta epsilon i minus ln q. And because the uh, uh, natural logarithm of e to the power of negative beta epsilon i is simply negative beta epsilon i, and then we have minus ln q here. So this expression looks a bit simpler than this. And then what we will do is we see negative sign here, negative sign here, negative sign here. So we clean up a little bit. We uh, uh, change all those negative signs to positive signs. And then we combine these two terms and we combine these two terms. That means we'll just separate these two terms. So we have this beta epsilon i times the sum, beta, uh, uh, beta epsilon i times the sum here. And notice that beta or q does not depend on i. So that's why I took beta over q out of the sum, beta over q out of sum. Inside this uh, expression of the sum, I uh, kept epsilon i times the exponential function here. And then you have L and q times this part. So you have L and q times this part. And remember, q is independent of i, so I took this q out of the sum. So we have, again, the sum of two terms. And really, if you pay attention, this part is simply q. This is the definition of q. So this q and this q cancel. We have L and q here. And again, we just copy this part over here. All right, so how do we simplify this part? We'll do that indirectly. Let's evaluate the first derivative of L and q with respect to beta. So we'll do that. Uh, d L and q is equal to dq over q. All right, this is because the first derivative of uh, L and q is 1 over q. That's why we got this. And then we uh, have this 1 over q here, and then we just do dq over d beta. So this is dq over d beta. Uh, the uh, first derivative of a sum is equal to the sum of the first derivatives. So that's wha what I did here. And then it's simple to take the first derivative of this exponential function, which is just negative uh, epsilon i times the same exponential function here. So I got this uh, negative epsilon i times this exponential function here. All right, and don't forget uh, uh, this 1 over q, this 1 over q here. So if we pay attention again, you look at this expression. It's awfully similar to this expression. What's the difference? The difference is in front of this, you have a negative beta. And inside this, you have uh, a beta here. And in front of this, you have negative sign here. So the only difference is this negative sign and this beta. And then we can uh, rewrite this part as negative beta times d l and q over d beta. Again, this part and this part are awfully similar. There are only two differences. One is the negative sign here. The other is the beta here. Therefore, this part equals negative beta times this part. So therefore, we have this negative beta here times the first derivative of L and Q over uh, d beta. And this is the expression of entropy, where beta, again, is the reciprocal of KBT. So now we can uh, transform this equation a little bit. Uh, d beta over beta is d L and beta. So we can also write out the uh, expression of entropy this way. Uh, this looks uh, fairly neat. And also, we know that beta is 1 over kBt, so L and beta is actually negative L and kBt. So we can actually change this to plus d L and q over d L and kBt. And d L and kBt is simply d L and t. Why? This is because the exact differential of the natural logarithm of the Boltzmann constant is zero. The Boltzmann constant is a constant, so the exact differential of a constant is zero. 
Therefore, we have this equation. This is really neat. The expression of entropy is simply n times kb times ln q plus the first derivative of ln q with respect to ln t. So this this uh, expression, I would say, is um, the easiest one to memorize if you have to memorize the expression of entropy. And the above derivation and this expression are for particles that are distinguishable. Uh, what if the particles are indistinguishable? And then we have to consider there are a total of n factorial permutations uh, that uh, are associated with the single microstate if the n particles are indistinguishable. So we will have to subtract this term by uh, uh, kb. We'll have to subtract this kb uh, times the natural logarithm of n factorial uh, for indistinguishable particles. Again, we need to uh, uh, understand this. The n factorial permutations of the n particles correspond to one single microstate. All right, and then we use the uh, starting approximation again. Ln n factorial is equal to n times ln n minus n. So we expand it here, and then we combine uh, this uh, to uh, one, two, three, four. We have we combine these four terms. We get n times r uh, times the sum of ln q and d ln q over d ln t, and then minus uh, the natural logarithm of n n is the number of particles, and then plus 1. And how can we get this again? This uh, n times kb uh, equals n r. So this is because this uppercase n is the number of most times the Alpha-Gatto constants. kb is the ideal gas constant r divided by the Alpha-Gatto constant. Therefore, this uppercase n times kb is equal to this lowercase n times r.